How vertical facial development leads to snoring and sleep apnea. It surprises most people when I make any suggestion that their facial development hasn't been anything but perfect. It's not a concept most people, I think, have thought about much. And yet, when I give them the evidence, it seems so obvious. And one of the underlying principles stems from the fact that our ancestors, and our common ancestors for all of humanity, spaces were further up and forwards than the modern man is now. They very much resembled the sort of beauty queens, um, uh, Aboriginal peoples, you know, indigenous populations alive today, or people with naturally straight teeth, a very similar position. And as the change in muscle tone and change in oral posture and swallowing, these environmental influences have affected modern society and, of course, the growth of the face. Faith is a lengthening, they're dropping down and back. And this is the concept of craniofacial dystrophy. And as that occurs, the tongue, which we forget how large the tongue is, but it stretches right from the high eye to the top of the soft palate, right forward to behind the front teeth and right back to the back of the airway, or hopefully not quite the back of the airway. This organ is squashed as the face develops vertically, as you have a downswing of the anterior craniofacial complex. Basically your face melts down and back, and as it melts down and back to where we consider a modern norm, already the space of the tongue has been constricted. And most people will go about compensatory mechanisms to support their airway. And these compensatory mechanisms usually involve holding the head slightly forwards, so pulling the tongue that's attached here up out the airway, and often keeping some of the tongue between the teeth, or a range of other mandibulolingual tongue and jaw positions. The problem is that these positions work very, very well when you're awake, and they're less effective when people fall asleep, which will allow the tongue to drop back into the airway, leading to both snoring and sleep apnea. And of course, many people who are slightly larger tend to prefer sleeping on their back, which only helps to exacerbate this underlying problem. But it draws a clear relationship between the face, sorry, the change in the facial shape and snoring and sleep apnea. It's just your tongue is dropping further down and back into your airway as the face drops further down and back, leading to these problems.